Good evening, garden friends. Today is the big reveal of my neighbor's backyard garden oasis. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, allow you to see the process of what it took for us to create this garden oasis. Um, do a walk through of what it looks like now and then spend some time with the homeowners Siv and Narissa. Good morning garden friends. Okay so this is the area that we're going to be focusing on getting a lot of this cleaned up but yeah we're going to go ahead and get all of this stuff cleared out first. All right well come along with us. <music> The sun is starting to come up. This will also help in regards to um, determining the plants that we are going uh, to put over in this area. So just gotta finish getting this all cleaned out. That way we can start getting things leveled off. <music> premise of this is that different wood species have different natural tannins in it uh -huh. and some will darken easily way to help expediate that but not the black okay so we have the garden beds cleaned out and I'll show you those but what I'm gonna do is get the new portion of the fence here is just one section that I'm gonna do the uh, aging process with the tea, the black tea, and then the zero 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 uh, wool and apple cider vinegar to sort of get it to match more of the old uh, wood that he has cleaned off. So the process is just about uh, putting the tea on the the wood, slap it on there, so that it'll end up soaking in. You let that dry for about an hour. Okay, so they're measuring for the pathway for the gravel pathway 17, 17. All, right. all right and then that length on the side Twenty-five. Okay, seventeen, twenty-five, and then I think we said for the walkway it was twenty-eight and twenty-six. 
Okay, so we're good with that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that metal edging to lay out the pathway and the area against the back of the fence that goes around to the back gate to help uh, direct the rain to um, go into the backyard. All right, guys, you can see literally a blank slate after getting everything cleaned out, leveled off so that we can start planting flowers. Okay, so we're getting the metal edging for the flower bed and the walkway installed. Then the outline will be ready for the gravel. And now I'm going to go ahead and start painting the water barrel that we are going to use as the holder for their water fountain feature. And the one thing that you want to make sure is when you're painting items is to put on very thin coats and allow it to dry before you add another coat on to it. So we'll go ahead and get started. <music> help um, with addressing their water drainage with doing the trench which we're going to add gravel we've also graded the pitch of the area that is behind the metal uh, framework here all right we're getting ready to start on day two of the garden oasis makeover for my neighbor okay so a new direction is going to be we're going to still work with the rocks but we're going to weave them in between the pavers and take them down the whole length of the walkway to the back area and then we got the monkey grass that will be lining up the bed. We'll get those put in with uh, some compost and some biotone. So they have a nice, healthy start. Okay, so my neighbor believes in pacing himself. But it will look beautiful. It already does, even though it may take him a week to get it done. <laughs> Good afternoon, garden friends. So we're back over at our neighbor's house to finish creating their garden oasis. So um, a couple things that we're gonna end up doing is um, getting the hole dug in the tree stump and start placing some of the plants that we're gonna be putting in the flower beds. So come along with us. Okay, so this is one of the things that we're doing. We actually started to dig out the hole inside the stump that they just got uh, cut down and what we're going to do is we are going to put this lemon coral sedum in here with the goal to have it spill over all the way down on the stump over a period of time but yeah he's going to go ahead and get started on cutting into the wood. Okay, so this is the bed that we're gonna be working on to start laying out the plants, get everything that they have in the pots into this flower bed. And you might be wondering why I'm using the shovel 
to dig the holes where it is predominantly a lot of roots. <laughs> got to blow it out and put the dirt in and then put the lemon coral sedum in there okay it is coming along so nicely look at the walkway and then the monkey grass that we have lined up with the solar light panels we're just slowly but surely putting the plants in making sure we have them in the right spot there's an azalea that is in this corner and then here is the lemon coral sedum that as i stated is going to grow eventually all the way around this stump and then we have some grasses that we are putting in here along with some lantana. Another little area that we have done already is another azalea with the lamb's ear and begonias. It's looking really nice. Okay, so this is the other side that we're working on. And they even got the little water feature going, but we got some begonias, some more monkey grass, we have the Budlia butterfly bush, some more lantana, the, um, another azalea bush. We also have the woodland phlox. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is mimic uh, the colors and also the plants on the both sides of the garden shed. Doesn't that just look so nice? And then uh, we got like one hole there, Doug, so that we can get um, another woodland phlox in there. And then we have another Budlia uh, butterfly bush and another lantana and some more begonias. And then we did two on this stump. Also put the sedum in for it to trail down. All right, as I stated with any garden project, this is not something that happens overnight. Um, so we will continue with our process of adding some annuals in the beds and then mulching the entire uh, area. Good evening, garden friends. It is day number four of the Garden Oasis Makeover. So um, I gotta dig up uh, a couple plants. I gotta move a couple plants over into the area and a rose bush, um, some hydrangeas, and also some pastas are what we're gonna be working with today. So come along on this next day. I'm so excited. Okay, it is coming along nicely. And as you know, with gardening, <laughs> It's all about placements, lighting, and just uh, textures and combinations of plants. So right now, this is the current layout and it might change. Um, we also have some flag irises, yellow irises that we're going to do in clumps on, on both sides of the light 
that look at this guys this thing is has so many buds on it it's gonna look pretty because what we did we put the chinese fringe uh, bushes here they were up in the front and not getting enough sunlight but can't you see that isn't that going to be amazing to have the white flowers of the hydrangea uh, as the backdrop for the chinese fringe but we are putting uh the hydrangea in the ground because like i said everything that the homeowner has in pots we are putting in the ground and then we have this yellow uh rose bush that we're gonna plant here take it out of the pot look at all those buds look at all of those buds and then the other thing that they did was in the back corner let me show you because this leads to their back um area where they put all their wood chippings and what have you they end up leveling it out so that we can put some more gravel down and then finish the pathway to the door okay it is day five of the garden oasis creation um my goal is to have this done by this weekend all right so let's get to work okay so what i'm gonna do is sort of just start laying out the plants uh for where i want them to be at um and then we'll go ahead and dig the holes put the biotone in and then cover them back up okay so we're digging the holes I'm sweating digging the holes for the hostas that we're going to have lined up around the tree i want to get those guys situated first before i work in the other plants so this is coming along really really nicely and like i said we're doing a mixture of compost manure and also biotone so that the plants are going to have a, a good start and it not be so much of a um stress to the plants okay so we're gonna go ahead and get this hydrangea out of the pot we've dug the hole uh double its size and double its depth but uh we're also going to put some compost and manure in the bottom of the hole and uh some biotin take a look at it okay turn it to where the tag is in the front I think I want more yep a little bit more oh no okay that's fine Can you go get me the hose I need to water this before um, we go ahead and cover the dirt over and that's one of those things sometimes when pot, uh, plants are in pots they quickly get root bound and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak the root before I start okay filling it up with water hey, Kevin. to water on the outskirts not at the crown of the hydrangea that way you don't have to worry about it getting root rot but the water will be going uh, to the roots that end up growing out all right so let's get the more compost put around here <laughs>
got that one planted. I'm gonna go over here. Take this, you need to dig a hole for this one right here. Right where it's at. want to be able to add some color to the garden bed and so I've dug the hole got the uh, biotone in it and then I'm gonna put some compost in it <music> here for the other hostas that are going to go in this area. Hey Slim, can you come move this plant out the way? Or at least hold this. Or... <laughs> set over here. Kevin's over there doing the rock garden area for us to put some flocks over the the creeping flocks over in that flower bed. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on this area. And one thing about transplanting pastas, you're going to have um, the leaves break but they are so resilient, so you're not gonna have to worry about it. So I got two hostas that I am separating and planting next to this other stump that they have in the yard with the hope that I'm gonna have it close enough to where when it gets full size, it'll help cover it over. And then I'll probably plant some annuals in front of it. And then we got three 
Sunshine Legustrums. So I'm gonna line up along this side of the flow. All right, we are in the process of getting the holes dug for the Sunshine Legustrum. And like I said, we got a lot of roots over here and big roots. So you gotta be really careful uh, when using the auger, so. And while he's doing that, I'll go and start placing some of the annuals throughout the flower bed. <laughs> for Siv and Nerissa. Um, as you see, we have like, we start off with like a rock garden bed. And one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna add some uh, flocks in here to cascade over the rocks during this season. Uh, we were able to utilize a lot of the plants that they had, this hosta, we were able to separate and add as a border around their tree along with some azaleas that they had and this is the thing when it comes to gardening is it's always best to use the things that you have and then start building 
um, around them because those are the things that you have already gotten accustomed to and you like in your garden. Now this is also new, um, their water feature. And what we ended up doing was taking their rainwater barrel and converting it into a water feature for them. We've also um, dabbed in annuals. We got some petunias, we got some zinnias, we have some angelonias that are over here by the water feature and then another form of sedum that the goal is for it to be trained to go completely around the new water feature definitely got some grasses that will add uh, height and texture and this is the variegated grass and in front of it we have santana um that it will get 30 by 30 inches here um and will be a nice complement to the grass we transplanted their bobo from the pot this is probably one of my favorite where we took their chinese fringe uh bushes that weren't doing too well up in the front because it wasn't getting enough sun and we have their uh, limelight as the backdrop to it. We also put in lemon coral sedum with the goal for it to spill over the edge of the, of the stump as a conversation piece. And then, like I said, we have annuals and part of that was to uh, add a splash of color because we know the sedum is going to take uh, some time before it ends up covering this this stump we also have some bachelor buttons in the back along with some zellias and then we lined the new pathway with monkey grass doesn't that just look so nice? And we did it on the other side of the walkway to have consistency. All right, let's go and take a look at the other side of the garden bed. And then we lined this up with some additional hostas to have that balance on both sides with the garden lights. We have a Budlia butterfly bush, another lantana and a woodland phlox that is accented against the azalea bush. And then we have the backdrop of hostas up against the back wall and then just spotted in between the perennial plants, more annuals to give us that color. Sunshine Ligustrum bushes that also flank the back end of the garden bed. And then, you know, this is all about, you know, setting the tone that you want in your garden. Um, we try to focus on plants that once established they are drought tolerant and you know add that beauty all season long so it just turned out so very nice and just that whole view of the new garden oasis So we're going to talk a little bit with uh, Siv and Narissa and get some feedback from them in regards to how uh, they like their new garden oasis. Okay, everyone, this is Siv and Narissa. And like I said, they are our neighbors and um, it was an honor for me, you know, to be able to work on this project for them. They were of great assistance in helping us get this accomplished but 
you know, I just wanted to ask you guys, you know, how do you feel about the new uh, garden area? It is spectacular. It has exceeded our wildest dreams. He was just saying, we couldn't recreate this in a million years. <laughs> yeah, we, there's no way we could do this. By ourselves. And bring it all together like you did. It's yeah, just amazing. It's just, and it's their favorite part, the whole thing. The gra I, I would say the gravel path. Uh-huh. It's a really nice focus area for mm -hmm. the garden, but I think I like the, I like every part of it. There's <laughs> nothing I can say that I don't, you know, like. I think the water feature was just such a brilliant idea where I never would have thought of painting those things, painting those ugly water barrels and repurposing <laughs> it to look so beautiful. Yeah, and my favorite, I think, is the tree stumps and, the, and seeing the, the plant eventually covering over all over the I think that would be amazing. Well, that's good. You know, and like I said, you know, with gardening, it is. It's about experimenting with stuff, you know, and repurposing what you have, you know, and you can create those beautiful spaces. Now, how long have you guys lived here? 11 years. 11 years? Okay, okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Um, they bestowed upon me um, the honor to um, place a memorial plaque for their daughter. And I did not think of that lightly. Um, and what I ended up doing was the rose bush that is right behind them um, is what I chose to put her memorial plaque. And part of the reason for choosing the rose bush, when you think of gardening, you know, with any plant, you have a solid root system. And to me, that solid root system for the rose represents the foundation of Sivinarissa. And the roses represents the beauty of their daughter's soul. While gone, she will forever be with them. And I cannot thank you guys enough um, for we that can't, honor. We can't thank you enough for everything you've done. <laughs> you and Kevin. Yeah, I yeah, my sidekick, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but it was. This was truly, truly a pleasure, and I am so happy that you guys really, really like it. We do. We do. I mean, we will get years of enjoyment out of this garden. Good, good, and, good, good. And a lot of exercise keeping it up <laughs> <laughs> uh, like i said gardening is a lot of work you know but at, at the end of the day when you can come out and enjoy it yes. it is worth it Absolutely. it is so worth it well yes. once like i said i just want to thank you guys again for giving me this opportunity and i'm so thankful you know that you guys really really enjoy it I really had no idea how much time and effort and labor. <laughs> it was a labor of love for you, and I saw that. I mean, it, it was incredible. I have never had anybody gift me something this beautiful. No, you are thank more than welcome. You. More than welcome. My heart, thank you. Yep. And Ariel, thank you. She would have enjoyed this so much. Well, I am so happy I was able to create this for you guys. It means a lot to me, so. All right, um, like I said, thank you guys once again um, for allowing me to do this and also showcase it on my YouTube channel, Inspiring Garden Corner. You guys have a great evening, okay? <laughs>